Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. It's a little chilly here in northern New York. It's about 40 right now and the temperature's still dropping. Hoping for some frost on the ground tomorrow. But anyways, um, it's good to be back. This is my first live video since the last time I went live. If you remember that, when that was, I really don't. What I'd like to do is I'd like to talk today about a little bit about our reflection and what are we a, a reflection of. And the definition of reflection is this, a representation of oneself. And the thing is, is our reflection can be influenced, and the word influence, the definition of that is the capability of someone to be a compelling force in your actions in your activities and your thoughts. They can make you change the way you're thinking about a situation. And the word thinking, the definition is a, a rational thought or reasoning. So these people are evil, even are even able to come into your life and change the way you are looking and your perspective, the way you are looking at certain things. But I'm going to put this out there right now. And if it hurts your feelings, then you should check your conviction. It's not our job to try to figure out what God has chosen us to do and what he has called us to do and why he has called us to do it. It's our job to do what he has called us to do. Nothing more, nothing less. <clears throat> if you feel the need to exceed that, then you make sure it's according to God's will and for his glory. Hallelujah. And God wants to see himself in everything that we do. God wants to see his own reflection in us and through us. Is that amazing? Like when we go out and preach, we have to remember that when we're preaching to people or speaking to people, the image that we portray, the people that we're talking to, Okay, if they're filled with the Holy Spirit and they know Christ as their Lord and Savior, then you're speaking to the Spirit of God in them, not only speaking to them. So the way you can you talk to them can influence their thought processes. Praise God today. God wants us to see ourselves as He sees us in all things. Not what we see when we see ourselves like looking in a mirror. Because that reflection that you see in a mirror isn't you because it's reversed. It's like when I try to pick a hair out of my ear, it's very difficult because the image is reversed. So I think my hand is where it's supposed to be through the reflection and not where it actually is. <clears throat> and that's that's pretty simple to it's pretty difficult to explain but it's simple to see when you try to do these things to yourself in the mirror praise God and then when we look in the mirror then it's not our image it's a reverse image and so we truly don't see ourselves anyways hallelujah and when we look in the mirror we should be reflecting what what should we see in that reflection? We should see the Spirit of God, the Word of God, as a reflection when we look at ourselves in a mirror. If it does not reflect Christ's image, are we thinking of an image the way others see us? Are we trying to build an image the way others see us? And we're trying to conform to what they want to make us? Remember, let's go back to influence. People can influence the way you dress. They can influence the way you speak. They can influence your thought process. They can influence it, their, your entire environment around you. How you drive, how you eat, things like this. So what God wants to see us as, he wants to see himself through us. And when he sees that, he sees his children. We see their suggestive reasoning also which means that can change our mindset. And it shows in the image as looking through a mirror. We can see their image instead of the image of God and what they want to 
because what we want to do is we want to see ourselves and we want to see the image of Christ. <clears throat> Sometimes I look in the mirror and I'm like, man, that's a broken man. That is such a broken man. But I'm glad I have Christ Jesus in my life because he's the one that, that fixed me. Praise God today. At this, I'm going to tell you now, we need to stop taking suggestions from those who are not filled with the Holy Spirit. These suggestions, these ideas, these thoughts do not reflect the image of God at all. They reflect the flesh. No matter how positive you think they are, they are still thoughts of the flesh and not of God. For they are not of faith they are, or prayer. They are not faith or prayer filled messages that can lift us up. <laughs> and if all people want to do is criticize you, then step away from them. Walk away. That's not a positive image. They just want you to look down at the ground and they, they don't ever want you looking up. And they want you to remember them when you're thinking things in all of your thoughts. Romans chapter 1 and 22 can attest to this statement. It says, while they were claiming to be wise, they made fools of themselves. So as you think you're you're listening to this human wisdom, all these um, suggestions that people are putting into your mind, they're still foolish thoughts because they're from the mindset of men. In this day and age, we are thinking, as Christians, we are thinking too many man-made thoughts, and these thoughts, because they are our own, even our own, are already corrupted. And that corrupts our mind, that corrupts our body, and that corrupts our soul. Because nothing corrupt is part of the Spirit of God. Don't get me wrong, okay? I'm going to tell you now, the spirit man and the flesh, right now, have to walk as one, as Jesus proved this. But the spirit of God has been around a lot longer than our flesh has even since the beginning and it'll be here at the even at the end of the age but we tend to put our thoughts first before we put the thoughts of the Holy Spirit into our mindset and into action that's the thing when it gets into our mind it goes into our heart and it comes through our body and then we put it into action so whatever we think that's going to be seen by others and that is the reflection that they will see and the flesh will always be in conflict with the spirit. I don't care how how many people tell you, "Oh, I'm fine. I'm 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 comfortable. I'm this, I'm that." The flesh is always battling with the spirit. And if they're comfortable, watch out because they might not be walking in the spirit of God. There's always a battle going on somewhere because the world hates Christian. The the world hates sons and daughters of the most high living God. They hate Christians, but they despise us. They despise sons and daughters because we will not conform to their churches. We will not conform to their doctrines. We will not conform to their belief systems. And that really pisses them off. And then they cast us out. Great. I feel like a guy sent into the wilderness. And when I got to the wilderness, I met all my brothers and sisters there. We're all a bunch of vagabonds for Christ. And it's an amazing thing. It's, it's a beautiful thing. And we are all content, even though we've been cast aside by, by churches and doctrines and belief systems and the world, because we know who our Lord and Savior is. <coughs> You'll have to excuse me because it's a little dry in this house. It's 40 degrees outside, and when the heat comes on, it's a dry heat. So I'm a little frosty. I've been outside working on the watching the birds in my birdhouse all day. Hallelujah. Okay, but let me get back to my message. Again, the flesh will always be in conflict with the Spirit of God, and that's why we need repentance that brings complete change and control over the flesh and over our mindset. Take captive, take into captivity every thought and then cast it down. The flesh is trying to control the Spirit of God. And who controls the flesh? The human mind, influenced by demonic spirits. So that's what we don't want. 
praise God. Even as our first breath was a serpent supernatural um, action of the Spirit of God, why do we now try to breathe our own breath? When the Spirit of God comes into us, we're still trying to breathe the worldly air. We're still trying to walk in worldly ways. We're still trying to be accepted. I can tell you right now, if you're watching this video, you are not accepted by anyone in the world. And they're talking about you right now. Somebody somewhere is talking about you. You know, there's an old saying, oh, my ears are ringing, somebody must be talking about me. Oh, my ears are ringing so bad, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's just crazy. So I know something's going on somewhere. But that's besides the point. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9 through 13. We have to remember things from long ago. That God is God and there is no one like Him. Who tells the end from the beginning. From ancient times, things not yet done. This is the spirit that we're dealing with. The flesh is about here and now, personal satisfaction now. What we did in our past, we reflect upon, and then we say, oh, that was so great, let's try that again. And then we start thinking about our future. One, one thing the flesh likes to tell us to do ooh, is we can have a five-year plan. Everybody has a five-year plan. I don't know anybody that doesn't. And I don't know one single person that has ever succeeded in their five-year plan. And their five-year plan just keeps changing and changing and changing and changing. So I dropped that. I stopped making plans. New Year's resolutions, I stopped those. I made a resolution about 20 years ago. I said, I'm not going to have any more New Year's resolutions. And it worked. And then I became born again. And then none of that mattered anymore. None of that that, was, that I'm dealing with the flesh that matters anymore. Even complaining or 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 being mad at people. I just walk away and I say, praise God. I said, if you're going to choose to walk in that attitude, then you choose. Because I don't want to reflect that. I don't want to talk about, I don't want to talk to somebody about your attitude and the way you back talk against me. That's what I'm trying to say. And there's people out there and I just say, praise God, you go ahead and believe what you want to believe because I have to believe in the Jesus Christ of Nazareth from the gospel, from the biblical text. I can't believe in any other Christ. And he, and when he said it, I believed it. When I became born again eight years ago, I, I just, I wanted to put on Christ. I want to cloak myself with the word of God. And, and today I want to be a reflection of that. And I hope many see that. And I don't, I don't really worry about tomorrow. Um, I'm just going to let it come to pass. There are things that need to get done, but I, I have to take care of today. And sharing this word today has been a burden for me, not going live for so long. But now that we're settled and I'm up in, in upstate New York, and it's 40 degrees out, and I get some food in my belly, and I'm relaxed, so I'm able to do these things again. I'm going to try to be doing this every other day because I've got a lot to share with, with everyone. Okay, let me get back to this word. Sorry for going off the sideways here. Praise God. And God said this, I will make it happen. I have planned it, yes, and I will do it. And we see he's done it already. When he wrote in the book of Isaiah in chapter 53 and 54 and, and talked about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, what happened? How many years later was it when he sent, when he put Christ on the cross to glorify himself? And then when Jesus died and he ascended, he defeated death and that our sins were, were blotted out. Through repentance, remember that, we must repent. We must turn our lives around and we have to be followers of Christ. So we're walking in the image of God. God wants to see us walking in His image because that's how He made us to begin with. And He said this too in Isaiah chapter 46, I am bringing my victory and my salvation, which He did. So we can claim victory and we can claim salvation through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hi, Dirk. Hi, Eddie. 
Hi, Michael. How y'all doing today? <coughs> God bless y'all. Thanks for joining. So today, as we are walking in the image of God, we have access to his thoughts and his image of us through the scriptures and the power of the Holy Spirit. From our beginning of salvation to our own ending. And God has already told us what our own ending is going to be like. So we don't have to fret about it. Because we already know. We don't have to worry about if we're going to die tomorrow in a, in a plane crash or a, a meteor comes down or a satellite comes and smashes into this house. I don't have to worry about my ending because God has already told me what my ending is going to be. And it's a glorious ending. As long as I continue to walk in his in the obedience of his word and so many think but right now because now we have access to God's thoughts so many think they can try to they can change the thoughts of God okay they think they can be God's advisors and they say things like I think this is what God's thoughts are I'm going to tell you what I believe God is saying and here's another one I was led by the Holy Spirit to tell you what God's thoughts were supposed to mean. Watch out for people like that. <coughs> God has his own personal thoughts for you, and you don't know what they are. And when it comes down to it, he'll tell you. He'll tell you what his thoughts of you are. You can hear in his voice. If, if you hear his voice clear and plain, if you don't, then cry out to God. Cry out to God, seek his face, and seek out his voice. Because it's there waiting for you to be spoken. Amen. And these are just a few examples of the mindset of man getting in the way of God's thoughts. It's like when Daniel was praying. And those prayers didn't reach heaven for like 30 days. Okay? These people are going to get in, your way, in the way of your thoughts because they're going to tell you how to pray. You have your own personal prayer life with your God Father in heaven and nobody can pray that prayer the way you do nobody can have a conversation with your Father in heaven the way you personally do I can't be your influence I don't try to influence anybody I want to make people dependently on the Holy Spirit dependently independent which means you don't depend on anyone else to tell you what or how to move in the Spirit of God. And you allow the Spirit of God to move through you the way God has His thoughts planned out for you. Praise God. And I don't believe in destiny or any of these other things that people start talking about. Destiny or fortune or, or anything like that. God has a plan already and His thoughts are not your thoughts. He already has a plan laid out for you. And it, there's a time for and a season for each one of these steps as you move forward in His Word. Say you're, you're here and God wants you here. And you get here and you stop. God's going to say, well, why did you stop? Why didn't you keep going? He says, and then you say, well, I'm tired. I, I don't know if this is for me. And God says, well, if you stop here, then you won't receive your blessings that are here. You have to go from point A to point B. There's no stopping in the middle. Maybe there's time for a little rest, but your blessings are at the end of your journey. Praise God today. <clears throat> and here's one for you also. Psalm chapter 78, verse 35 and 36. They would remember that God was their rock. God is my rock and my salvation. But then there are those that will flatter you with their lip service. They are trying, they, they were lying to him with their tongues. Because if someone is preaching to me and they're lying to me, they're lying to the Spirit of God in me. And I can feel it when they lie. This is the level of discernment that I have right now. Because I know the Word of God that is written, and that God tells me very clearly that He is my counselor and my teacher. And He will not. He will not let anybody tickle my ears. It's that level of discernment that every Christian should be praying for. So they understand the truth in the Word of God and what are lies and what are sins. 
There are so many Christians today that don't even understand what the word sin means. There's so many so many Christians out there, they're still walking in their own mindset. They do what was they do what is right in their own mind. And that's not very acceptable with the word of God. What are you reflecting? If you're not reflecting God's image, what do you see in the mirror? Do you see disparity? Do you see pain? Do you see suffering? Do you see someone other than yourself? It's because other people have influenced your, your mindset. Satan tried to influence Jesus. Satan influenced Adam and Eve, the very first man and woman. And he's influenced so many people throughout history. And if people, if Christians think that Satan has stopped working today, then they should check their conviction. Because he's right in our ears all the time. His demons are right in our ears all the time, trying to influence our walk with Christ. They make us doubt. They make us fear. They make us um, have a trembling spirit, a paranoid spirit. If we're restless at night, that's not having the mindset of Christ. It's because of what we see ourselves as. Amen. Now, when we're listening to these men, these men that are trying to influence our mind, okay? There's two, there's two things out there. There's people there that are speaking truth, and there are those that are speaking a lie. Which men are you listening to? Which, which can make you, which, which one of those can influence your image the most? If we're listening to the Spirit of God, we will know very quickly, with no doubt in our minds, which spirit is being reflected through that person. Talking or preaching or prophesying. When someone is talking to you, you should see with your, with your spiritual eyes what spirit is talking to you. And this is when you have to make the decision. Do we bow and submit to what that spoken word was? Do we test that spoken word? Do we rebuke that spoken word? Do we acknowledge that spoken word? Or do we even encourage it? But that depends. What you, what you do next, what action you take after that word has been spoken, is one of the most important parts of reflecting that image. Because you could be spoken the bad, the, uh, an evil word or a good word. There's no mid or middle moderate word. There's only good and evil out there. Because devil the devil owns the fence. The devil owns the fence. Remember that. You're either in or you're out. You can't have one foot in hell and one foot in heaven. You can't have one foot in the world and, and, and have your eyes in heaven. Everything you should do, everything you do should reflect the image of Christ. And here's a righteous scenario for you. In Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 18, Then they said, Come, let's unite against Jeremiah. For the priests' instructions will not fail, nor will the sages' counsel, nor the prophets' words, and pay no attention to his words. They will gather against that image that you reflect. Jeremiah reflected the image of God. And they came against that image. They didn't come against Jeremiah. <clears throat> you see, pay no attention to his words. They didn't say pay no attention to his face. Pay no attention to what he looks like. They said pay no attention to what he is speaking. And you'll find that in many, many circles today. Churches and doctrines and, and dioceses or whatever you want to call them. They've all become priests and Pharisees. They're all legalists. Because if you don't fit in with their clique, then, then you have to go elsewhere. That's why I'm glad I'm in the wilderness with my Christ Jesus and my brothers and sisters in Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. If we, and if we think about it, like I said, what were the words that Jeremiah was speaking? He was speaking God's word. He was a good example of of thinking God's thoughts and speaking godly those godly thoughts out of his mouth praise God today 
And now we know that an enemy, praise God, okay, let me move back. Jeremiah spoke to his Lord. He didn't speak to them. He said, pay attention to me, Lord. Can you hear my, what my enemies are saying? Now we know that any enemy that turns his head towards the Son of God is also an enemy of the Lord. Because they don't care how you look. They care about the words that are coming out of your mouth. And they're going to tell people, disregard those words. A lot of stuff that I preach puts people back on their heels. And they're like, oh my God, I don't believe he said that. Don't listen to him. He's a crackpot. I don't even care. Because the word I speak is the truth in the word of God. It's about your image and what image you portray. And the image is the words that you speak. And Jeremiah was portraying the image of God through his words. And those words will not come back void. Praise God today. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, the God of this age, okay, the God of this age has blinded the minds of those who do not have faith so they can't see the gospel. They don't carry the image of God. They don't carry the power of the Holy Spirit. They doubt what God has called them to do. So their faith is weak and, and floundering. It's like a fish out of water. And then they're easily blinded. They, they're easily they're easily just lured into different directions by fake by fake lures and, and fake bait and then they decide through their th through theologies and doctrinal speeches what kind of image that they want to portray hallelujah there are those that want to separate us from truth whether they realize it or not they want us to believe something other than what is written these changes to the Word of God are not in your face changes they are slight subtleties as the devil himself is so subtle he's probably sitting right next to somebody right now just just whispering in their ear oh it's okay to do this you can continue in this lifestyle it's okay God won't mind but that just means you don't have a clear voice in your head because our our minds will tell us that it is acceptable to do certain things before God's throne when God's throne is perfect and his word is true and sin is sin and repentance is repentance we need to get on our knees and cry out to God in repentance so we can live the life that God has called us to live, not the life that we want for ourselves and a life that is acceptable to man, but not God. Praise God. There are those in our lives <laughs> that want us to put them first. Their needs and their wants must be filled by first by us. Family and pastorship can be good examples of this. We lift people up too high sometimes, and we get in trouble with the Lord for it too, as this is the basic definition of idolatry, and we can't even recognize it. <clears throat> Whenever we put something before God, then we're living in the spirit of idolatry, and we don't even realize what mess we're putting ourselves into until we're drowning and we start burning and then we have to really cry out to God so he can snatch us from that fire. But some there's a lot of people today he's just going to let go because he spoke to them and spoke to them and spoke to them and spoke to them and they never listened. And he says, I'm done with you. I'm giving you up to a reprobate mind. And that's sad. That way people can live the way they want to be and be comfortable in that life, but they'll never be content because they'll be restless and they'll never know the truth in the word. And here's the truth of truths. If anything comes between our prayer life, our worship life, our study life, our ability to accept or render correction, our deliverance life, 
if it affects our ability to witness to people, if anyone influences our ability to come to the cross and live a life of sacrifice, we will not walk in what God has called us to walk in, any of us. Praise God. That's a powerful message. Don't let anything come between you and your personal relationship with God so you can continue to walk in His image. And I speak a lot about warfare, but I see so many weak, weak Christians out there tossed to and fro with the waves and the wind and false weak messages. People think, oh, that message was so powerful. I got so emotionally caught up. Oh, there you go. You got caught up in the flesh. If the message that is being spoken does not touch your heart in the depth of your heart, not the superficial heart, and touch your mind, that there is conviction in your mind, then it is a false word. There is nothing to that word. It is empty, empty words. And they didn't contain the thoughts of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. God is the one that speaks that message through that individual. And I hope that God is using me to reach somebody today. Praise God today. It's like today, humility is a misguided word. Meekness is also misrepresented. And the message of love is so watered down, it doesn't even include the message of the cross anymore. Or even one about true discipline or correction or on and on and on and on and on. People say I'm full of hate speech when all I preach is love because I preach warning. I preach exposure. I don't want anybody to suffer in the lake of fire. Sin is a sin is a sin is a sin. Love is love is love is love. And we have to walk in that unconditional love until we've done uh, all we can and we say, I love you, but I got to go. I have to give you up to whatever mindset you're walking in because I just can't, I just cannot be part of your lifestyle anymore. I can't, I can't even have a discussion with you. So I just got to cut you off and I have to do what I need to do so I can reflect the image of God. And right there is a reflection of the image of God because if you read Romans chapter 1 verse 28, and I mentioned this a lot, but a lot of people don't listen, and he gave them up to a reprobate mind. He said, okay, I love you, but now you can go and do what you think is right in your own eyes. The same way the Israelites did. In the very last chapter, in the very last verse of the book of Judges, and they did what was right in their own eyes. And it killed them. It killed their soul. Hopefully they were redeemed through Christ Jesus when he stole the keys of from hell. I pray for that. Can you imagine being in hell until Jesus returned? Until Jesus, un, un, being in hell, I'm sorry, until Jesus came came down off that cross, was put in the tomb, and then he went down in hell to to free all those slaves down there. Imagine being down there for that long. And then being down there, and when he shows up, you still reject him? There's, I, I'm sure there's souls that did it. I can't pray for them anymore. I can just praise God for the people who are watching this today, that they are listening to the truth in the word. Because I'm I'm not I'm not your savior. I'm just I'm just a messenger. Praise God. And I'm hope I hope I'm reaching out to somebody right now. I'm hoping I hope I'm busting somebody's bubble. Hey Dustin. Hi Johnny Gadsden. How you doing? God bless. You're, you came in right at the end of my message. <laughs> but that's okay. Hallelujah. It's going on Facebook after I'm done with this. Praise God. Okay, here we go. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2. All the ways of the people are pure in their own eyes, but the Lord tests their motives. Test the words that are being preached to you. Test the words that are being spoken to you. Test the words that are, that test your own thoughts. Is this of the Spirit of God? Well, maybe not. Test what you're watching on TV, what you're hearing on the radio. 
Some of these Christian songs today are, are so secular, it's not even funny. And those also influence our mindset and can change the image that we portray because then we start portraying that worldly, uh, modern Christian love, love, love spirit. And not the spirit of endurance, the spirit of, 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 of love, the spirit of, of joy, the spirit of contentment, the spirit of compassion. A lot of people don't see it, but I'm, 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 I, I'm very compassionate because I feel so much sorrow in my heart right now for, for what I see in, in this world. And what I see is happening in, in the body of Christ. And what I see is, is happening in some of these modern churches. I pray to my Lord and Savior, Lord, why? And, and then he says, just read your word and you'll find out why. And you'll know why. I've, he, God said and Jesus said, I've already explained it to you. Now you just have to read it. It's right there in the scriptures. Right there in the scriptures. Hallelujah. And he does this today through us. He tests our motives. God tests our motives. Because he wants us to walk in his reflection. Hallelujah. Have you been up to the challenge? Has God challenged you? Has God test your motives? Have you figured out that he's been doing it for such a long time and you just haven't turned your head in the right direction to see him testing you? So you can walk on the path that is that is the straight and narrow. Straight and narrow. 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 Not wide. This shows a traffic pattern. Praise God today. Hallelujah. It's like the difference between going down the road that I live on now, which is about this wide, and then uh, California 101 is like 12 lanes wide. That's the difference between going through the narrow gate, the straight gate, and the road to perdition. That's your traffic pattern. And on 101 right now, it seems like there's a traffic jam. And it's backed all the way up. People just waiting. They don't even want to divert. They're just going to stay right on that road. No matter how long they're stopped. They're just waiting to get in there. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's check out Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 30. No wisdom. Okay, I want you to hear this. No wisdom. No reflection of man's wisdom. Understanding or even advice. No reflection of these things. This knowledge of man can stand up against the Lord. Always have the word of God on your lips. And you'll be direct reflection of him. And people will gossip about you and say, don't listen to him. Listen to what we have to offer. Let's start thinking about what God thinks and we will know what he thinks and what he knows. Dive deep. Dive deep into the word of God. Dive deep into prayer. Dive deep into worship. Dive deep into fasting. Dive deep in, into praying. And then you'll know what God is speaking to you. Because he's not going to speak that to anybody else. It's like your individual prayer life. Nobody can tell you how to pray. Nobody can tell you how to praise. Nobody can tell you how to worship. Your individual relationship is what God wants to see in you. That's the image you need to portray to God. When he sees himself, when he sees his son, when he sees, when he sees the image that he created in you, Think about it. That's what he wants to see. You're his son. You're his daughter. You are no longer of this world. When you became born again, you were no longer of this world. And the world shouldn't have any influence over what you do. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. Whew. It is wit written. Quit admiring the human race or acknowledging their works, even in their atrocities. Do not mourn 
Do not mourn in their atrocities, because man is man and they'll always be men, and they're always bound for destruction. I watched the movie The Kingdom of Heaven the other night, and the thing is, it was about this. It was about one religion killing another religion, and they were both killing each other. And both of them claimed they were of God. Which God did they serve? They both served the same God, according to their own books. <clears throat> so they were killing each other in the name of Satan. And they didn't care about collateral damage. Hallelujah. In Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 5, Read that. Just read it. Remember that. Write it down. Jeremiah 16 and 5. And we see so much of the world in our face, we can't help to be part of their suffering. As the Lord speaks, again, quit admiring the human race or acknowledging their works, even in their atrocities. Do not mourn. And we get caught up in, in genocide. And we get caught up in, in, in people dying from viruses. And we get caught up in people dying in wars. And we think they're atrocities. People try to get us to focus on the Holocaust. I can tell you right now, there were a lot more atrocities worse than the Holocaust will ever be. When, when, one, when one government kills 20 million and another give, government kills 40 million of their own people, that's an atrocity. And if you want to say Holocaust is one of the worst things ever to happen, then I would suggest you go back in, in the historical um, archives of men. Praise God today. I'm not saying it was a, it was a good thing. I'm not saying you, you disregard it. But when, when something is put... When, when so much pressure is put on somebody's mind to believe and believe and believe and believe in this stuff and it's an atrocity that, that is above all others, then you have to watch out for that spirit. Praise God today. Most of the Jews that were killed, they believed in God, but they did not believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So what image were they portraying? If we put on the mind of Christ and we live in the image of God, we live in the image of His Son, we live in the image of His sons and daughters, the Jewish people do, do not believe that. They rejected our Lord and Savior. They put Him on the cross. And to this day, I'm not saying there isn't Messianic Jews, but if they don't believe in the message of the cross, then are they part of salvation? They died just like everybody else. And they had the same end. This is why I, I, don't, I don't care if I die tomorrow. Because God has already told me where I'm going to be. Because He told me who I am. And I'm hoping He's telling you the same thing today. Praise God today. Here's another one from Jeremiah. Do not enter into the house where there is mourning. Don't grieve or lament for them, for I have taken away my blessing. They did what was right in their own eyes. God removed their blessing. God removed their favor. Don't cry for them. He said, I have taken away my blessings and my kindness and my mercies from this people. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. We, do, we are not part of this world. We are not part of a worldly religion. We can't be part of the doctrine that many Christians believe in today. That's a different Jesus. We can't be comfortable in our sin. And we should know if we're sinning because the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God will convict us the moment we sin. It's not that we don't. People say, oh, you must be perfect because you preach you don't sin. I said, I never preach that I don't sin. 
I preach we don't have that sinful nature anymore. We don't live in sin anymore. We live by the Spirit of God. And if we sin, you know, even in the Old Testament, it talks about accidental sin. Satan is very subtle. Again, Satan is very subtle in the way he moves through people's minds. And he can very easily just divert us off that road just a tiny bit. And boom, we're caught in his snare. But we have a Lord and Savior and a Godfather in heaven who are willing to forgive us and correct us. But if you continue to live in that sin, again, Romans chapter 1 verse 29 and what I just spoke. Do not enter into the house where there's mourning because I've removed their blessing and, their, and my, my blessing, my kindness and my mercies from these people. Hallelujah. Rejoice in these words. Move away from these people that are trying to influence your mind. No, no, no. You have to believe it this way because that's the only way you can believe it. No, I'm telling you, believe, believe it the way God shows you how to believe it. I can't teach you how to believe it the way that God wants you to believe it. But you know what? When God teaches you, we'll be on the same mindset. Because we all walk in the same spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not going to tell you something other than what he tells me. And that's the truth. And the spirit of wisdom will come in, boom. And God is the one that gathers us together. In our spirit, in our souls, and in our mindset. Hallelujah. So many of us are gathered together already, even though we're a thousand miles apart, because we're walking in the same spirit. We are the true body of Christ, as sons and daughters of the Most High Living God. And we need to walk in that image. If we walk in any other image, then, then I'm not walking in truth. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Back to Romans chapter 1 verse 28. Even as they did not like to retain God in their minds and in their knowledge. So they know God. It's like an atheist. Why does an atheist bother, him, bother himself or burden himself with thoughts about God if he doesn't believe in God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even as they did not like to retain in their knowledge... God gave them over to a reprobate mind, which means he gave them up to their own mindset, the human mindset. And now Satan doesn't even have to bother. He's like, he just puts one whisper in their ear, and next thing you know, boom, they're sinning and sinning and sinning, and they're, they're walking in, in, in the reprobate mindset, and um, they're totally going against the laws of God. And even the laws of nature. They draw into unnatural acts. Praise God today. God wants you. God wants you to be all about him. He doesn't want you to be about you. Because he's the one that encourages you to walk in his ways. So you can be as he is. So you can be as you are. Isn't that crazy? So you can be as you are. And who are you? You're the image of Christ. You're the image of your Godfather in heaven. That image that we were first made in. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, my final thought here is this. Yep. Okay. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through town. He had no intention of staying. And there was a man named man there named Zacchaeus, a ruler among the tax collectors, and he was rich. He was trying to see Jesus because he was a short man. And he couldn't see because everybody was like a foot and a half, two feet taller than he was. <clears throat> so he ran ahead and climbed on a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus who was about to pass that way. <clears throat> when Jesus came to that spot, he looked up to, and said, Zacchaeus... Come down at once, I must stay at your home. Jesus knew the name of the man. He probably never met him before. And that's why they call him Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. And then, G then Zacch Zacchaeus came down out of the tree at once to welcome Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Jesus already knew the thoughts of Zacchaeus. He knew the desires of Zacchaeus. He knew that he need Zacchaeus knew that he needed Jesus in his life. And he had to see him. He climbed a tree to see him. I know some sycamore trees that are in my place in 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 Africa. They're pretty difficult to climb, so I can imagine what it took for him to climb a sycamore tree. Anyways, so at that, listen to this. God has known our thoughts, and he has planted that tree right where it needs to be. He's planted your sycamore tree right where it needs to be, even before we get to it. So when we want to see the Lord, the decision we make to climb it will let us be seen by our Lord and Savior. And we will get recognized above the crowd, for we came out of them. Hallelujah. And then Jesus will see our efforts and recognize us by name and tell us he wants to reside with us. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm going to finish and they're going to say this. Thank you for watching. And man cannot do this for us. For they are selfishly always looking at their own image. Zacchaeus was looking for the image of God. And he had to climb that tree. He had to get above the crowd so he could see the image of God. And that's what we need to do today. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I thank you all and love you all. And thank you for watching and um, God bless your evening. Bye-bye.